that's it. I've had enough. I'm going back to being a Christian. And you want to know why? It's because on Instagram, accounts like Jesus Posts Bro and uh, Believe to Jesus can get hundreds of thousands of followers for posting weird and just downright creepy memes. It's just, it's a huge potential audience. Why not? I'm going to sell out. I'm going to go back to being a Christian. I'm going to make corny Christian shirts, corny Christian memes, and even the terrible ones will outperform any atheist page because everybody loves Jesus. Christian TikTok is super popular and Christian YouTube is super popular. People like Roxanne Morgan, who has over 31,000 followers for making videos like Spiritual Warfare 101 which I'm going to be talking about today. But before that, look at what her top performing videos are on her YouTube channel. The top three are all about God giving her prophetic dreams, and they all have hundreds of thousands of views. People are ready and willing to buy into this stuff. They want to know, what is God telling other people? I want to hear about it. I want in on this. Let's see what God's saying. Roxanne even has one video about a demon screaming in her ear while she slept. <sighs> But that's another video for another time. So let's get into Spiritual Warfare 101. Hello, guys. Welcome back to my channel. God has been showing me a lot on this topic of spiritual warfare. It's something that we need to know about. It's something that Christians need to be educated in. Right off the bat, God has been showing me a lot. You just have to ask, how do you know that God is showing you anything? This is going to be a recurring theme through this video. Is there a spiritual realm? Is this fleshly realm with all these material objects, is this all there is? As far as we know, yes. As much as science has been able to discover, yes, it's all we have. But I have a feeling you're going to say something different. Let me tell you, there is definitely a spiritual realm. Oh, there it is. Definitely, huh? Interesting use of the word definitely there. By what measure? If you don't know this, you need to open your Bible. Is the Bible a reliable source of truth? Is that where we should be getting our knowledge from? Is that where we should be figuring out if there's a spiritual realm or not? Should it come from a book? Just like the Bible says that when it comes to the wind and you cannot see it, but you can see its effects, it's exactly the same with spiritual warfare, everything else that's going on in the spiritual realm. You cannot see it exactly with your eyes, but you do see its effects. True, we can't see wind, but wind is just air moving. And if people, multiple people see wind, they all agree it's wind. There's no, not everyone's going to agree that what you see as your God is actually something from God. As I know this sounds crazy, but it just is. There is a cosmic war, a cosmic battle happening right now as you are watching this video. It is all around us and it is very real. Where's your proof? Where's the proof of a cosmic battle? going on there is good and there is evil there is a moment when a beautiful baby is born and you feel like time stops and it's literally a moment of heaven on earth and then you turn on the news and you are seeing people being murdered and wars happening and people quarreling all the time and it's very clear to see that there is good and there is evil in this world. And it's exactly the same in the spiritual realm. That's interesting because didn't God kill a lot of people and order the death of a lot of people in the Old Testament? Does that make him evil or does he get a pass? I'm not real sure. There can be some real overemphasis on spiritual warfare and there can be some serious underemphasis on spiritual warfare. When it comes to the underemphasis, it can be people who don't believe there is a spiritual realm at all. Like that quote that says, The greatest trick the devil ever played on anybody was convincing them that he is not real. The greatest trick that religion ever played on anyone is convincing them that there's a God. 
The greatest trick that Moses ever played on anyone was convincing people that he talked to that God face to face. The greatest trick that Jesus ever played on anyone was convincing them that he was the Son of God. The greatest trick that Paul ever played on anyone was convincing them that he saw Jesus after Jesus was dead. When it comes to overemphasis to warfare, everybody knows Aunt Sue, who every time she stubs her toe, she curses the devil and thinks that she is under demonic attack because she stubbed her toe. It's just, we don't need, we need to have a healthy, biblical knowledge and sense of spiritual warfare. Okay, just wanted to add that in there. Oh, crazy Aunt Sue, who thinks that was the devil that did that? Let's set her straight and let her know about the real angels and demons fighting each other in the spiritual realm. There is an enemy who is very, very real. Very, very real. And he is out to get you. And what he wants to do is get in the way and stop God's plan for your life. He does not want you to be saved. He does not want you to have a deep intimacy with Jesus. He does not want you to be renewed. He does not want you to answer the callings that God is putting on your life. He does not want you to share, preach the gospel. That is the last thing that he wants to do. He does not want me to have this YouTube channel. That's why he attacks me. So that is basically what spiritual warfare is. There is a spiritual realm and there is the earthly realm. We just cannot see it with our physical eye. As we know that God is there and he's very present, very alive and very active in our life, but we cannot physically see him with our eyes. It's the exact same with the spiritual realm. How convenient. He can attack you in your mind. He can attack other people that then can affect you. He can affect you. He can attack you in your spirit. He can attack you in many, many ways. Damn. It sure sounds like the Satan character has a lot of power. But God allows him to do all of these things, right? Because he's testing you, right? He wants to see how loyal and faithful you are. How convenient. What the enemy will do is, from my own personal experience, is he whispers lies. He will whisper lies to you. How you doing, little Christian? Let me whisper in your ear. Tell you something that you might like to hear. You're not saved. God doesn't love you. You don't belong to the kingdom of God. You're not qualified to do that. Ministry? You? No way. Not happening. You ain't got that kind of confidence. Do you really believe what you believe? Or are you a fake? Is this the devil or is this just self-doubt? Is this just imposter syndrome that many of us struggle with? Why does it have to be the devil? We know that we are powerful spiritual beings because of Christ Jesus, but yet Satan continues to whisper those lies and we continue to listen to them and we continue to believe them. It sure seems like Satan talks a lot to her. So... Is that Satan or is it just you doubting yourself? Is this God or is it just you believing in yourself? I guarantee 99.9% .9 of what you have ever feared has never happened or came true. Because that's the truth in my life. The things that I have most feared, the things that have crippled me with fear have not even came true. Because just like Jesus tells us here, the devil is a liar. Fear is normal. Fear is a normal human response to things. Not only is he a liar, he is the father of lies. There is no truth in him. The devil likes to get me in my mind. I'm a deep, complex thinker. And so he likes to confuse your girl. And he confuses me bad. Yeah, I'd say he's doing a pretty damn good job. Look, this video is not an attack on Christianity. My channel is not an attack on Christianity. I just want people to really stop and think about the things that they believe. Why do you think that there's a devil? Why do you think that there's a God? The Bible? Okay. Why do you think that the Bible is the word of God? Why do you think that Jesus was the son of God? Really ask yourself these questions and don't just go by, well, that's what I've always been taught. Would you believe these things if your parents didn't? Would you believe these things if you were born in a different part of the world? Do you really think that you would believe the same way? 
I think I'm really fortunate to have been born in a country where it's okay to ask these questions and that I've surrounded myself with people who have also asked these questions. I don't think that I would be an atheist if I were born to different parents or in a different part of the world. I probably would be believing that way. But I think that I am lucky enough to where I was able to take a step back and really take another look and see why do I believe these things? Why did I believe that? I'm not even saying that there definitely is no spiritual realm. I just think that we don't really have a good enough reason to believe that there is one aside from emotions and feelings and thoughts and some books that were written a long time ago. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and share this video with a friend who you think might also like it. And remember, you don't need a God to be good. See you next time.